Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to the Chevrolet Silverado LTZ Premium Z71. Yes, it's quite a mouthful, isn't it? But then again, it is quite a mouthful of a truck. Oh, it's big all right. Over 5.9 meters long and about 2.1 meters wide. And you can never really forget those dimensions when you're driving it. People have told me, oh, you know, these things shrink up around you when you drive and they feel tighter and smaller, but nah. You get a 6.2 litre petrol V8 engine, delivering 313 kilowatts of power at 5,600 RPM, and peak torque comes in at 4,100 RPM, and that's 624 Newton meters. So quite impressive figures. Got variable valve timing, continuously variable valve timing, displacement on demand. So it does have cylinder deactivation when you're just cruising along lightly. The thing will make all sorts of calculations and work out which um, cylinders it can turn off. And it has about 12 or 15 different cylinder configurations that it can use to, um, to save fuel. Look, it's not a rocket ship because it weighs two and a half tons, but the thing about diesel utes that we uh, generally get to drive on, on uh, Australasian roads is they're a bit gutless. You know, they really are. If you're behind something that's doing 90 kilometres an hour on the open road and you're in your Ranger Raptor, you know, you can't really accelerate any faster and get past that 90 kilometre an hour road hog, you know. This thing, you can. So if you want to go fast in your ute, you have to get something like this because those diesel utes, no matter how many stripes or snorkels they're carrying, they're just gutless. It's a very quiet and sophisticated package I've found driving it around. It's very quiet exhaust note. You don't even hear much out the back when the little sliding window, which I'll show you soon, um, is open. It's hooked up to a 10-speed automatic transmission. This Z71 model designation really means it's got the full off-road package. So you've got a two-speed transfer case with proper high-low ratios, twin tube shock absorbers, an underbody shield, you get that for uh, taking those curbs on the way to the supermarket. You get a heavy duty air filter, all terrain tyres, these are big all terrain Bridgestone jewellers, they're sitting on 20 inch wheels, nicely polished in chrome of course. Uh, and it's got an auto locking rear diff and hill descent control. And the LTZ part of the package, this LTZ badge here, what that really means is chrome. Door handles, side steps, wheels, grills, mirror cap, the rear bumper, you've got the badging. Everything is a bit just kind of glitzy. This is a bit kind of old school, isn't it? I mean, surely they can come up with a better solution than, than this. Now, Silverados come out of the factory, of course, left-hand drive. So they go through a very extensive right-hand drive conversion process at the old Clayton Park in Melbourne, which was HSV in the old days. It's now GMSV. There's about 500 new parts that have been made to convert this from a, a left hooker to a right hooker. And I've got to say, they've done an amazing job. You particularly notice it in simple things like the footwell. Uh, often uh, right-hand drive conversions, your rest foot is never kind of really feeling like it's at home sitting there on the side of the transmission tunnel. The tunnel's never really been allocated to take a footrest in the right place, but these guys have done that. So you feel like you're in a genuine right-hand drive vehicle. You would never know it didn't come out of Chevrolet's factory, GM's factory, as a right-hand drive. So well done, GMSV, excellent job. It's actually built on a line that runs parallel in that same plant to the Dodge Ram line, where Dodges are uh, turned into um, to right-hand drive Rams. It's incredibly practical. It's got an auto down and auto up tailgate, which is really good because these things are bloody heavy otherwise. A sprayed on bed liner, which is really useful. Lots of tie down hooks in here. You've got a camera up here to see on your dash what's going on in the load bay as your blue tarp flies off down the southern motorway. You've also got lighting in here too. The load capacity on this, funnily enough, is not as much as you would get in a, a regular Ranger or a regular Hilux. It's only about uh, 750, 760 kg, so it's not really a one ton ute. But the main thing about this, of course, don't you love that? Don't you just love that? is that it tows like you would not believe. Now this has got the optional 70 millimeter tow bar on, which uh, if you can scrape away the rust here, says it's rated for four and a half thousand kgs. And that's what this vehicle can tow, four and a half thousand kgs. 
got anti-sway of course, you've got a camera on the back that can show you your trailer hitch as you back it up to hook up. It's got things that um, work on, the, on a special trailering app inside the vehicle that show um, if you, all your lights are working, um, you can adjust the brake balancing of your trailer. It'll tell you if your trailer gets stolen off the back. I don't know how you wouldn't notice that otherwise, but it'll do all that for you. So it's really well configured for those uh, who need to tow things that at four and a half tons, frankly, may not even want to be towed. Oh, I like climbing up into this thing, I must say. Using this big handle, it's just, it just feels like you've arrived, you know? Right, so inside, it of course is big. You've got a very slab fronted dashboard here, everything's sort of vertically arranged, it's not sort of laid out or sort of swooped out like you might get in a car. But yeah, it's very serviceable, it's easy to access things. Of course it's an automatic, 10 speed automatic. Uh, it's a column shift for the transmission, so you've got your lever here, you know, there's your, all your different selections there. It's kind of a bit weird having this driver um, sort of oriented transmission and, and drivetrain control over here on the right, well away from the, the centre of the vehicle. But then again, your gear lever is here on the right as well. So you've got different modes here. You've got a, a normal, a sport and an off-road mode available to you. And also when you've got your trailer hooked on, uh, the vehicle will know that and you can go to a trailering mode to here, which gives it another bunch of functionalities. Um, Auto means that the car will automatically select if it's going to be in two-wheel drive or will need to go into four-wheel drive. Uh, you've got a four high range, a four low range, and of course a two-wheel drive high range that you can manually select. Smallish sort of screen in the middle here. It is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto equipped, but you know it's, it's, it's got the stuff that you probably want to use. Seating is comfortable. The heated and ventilated seats. Uh, in the front here, there are also heated seats in the back. The steering wheel is also uh, heated. Heaps and heaps of room in the back. I've got the uh, the front seat there set for my height to drive in, so I'm about uh, 179, 180 centimeters tall, and I could basically get a, a chili bin between me and the back of the seat in front here. There's just so much room here. The center seat is um, a proper full width seat, so you're unlikely to touch um, head, shoulders, knees, or toes with the people on the outboard seats. It's a little bit firmer in the backrest, but it's still perfectly comfortable. And uh, these outboard seats today particularly are very comfortable for a long period of time. So you could do long family road trips in here, no problem whatsoever. You do have a, a little kind of unique thing here in each of these outboard seats, the backrest opens up and this is where you keep your handgun or anything else you want to put in there, of course. And the centre folds down here, more cup holders. Yeah, it's all pretty nicely made. It's a little bit plasticky. You know, you've got sort of hard surfaces. The, the sort of the vinyl-y, leathery seats are a little bit, you know, coarse in the grain. So you definitely know that it's kind of built to be hardy. But I think there's some reassurance in that. It's not too fussy, it's not too fragile. It all looks like it can take some mud, a bit of rough treatment, um, and still survive, and still all work as well. The beauty of it, of course, it's a big American truck, so everything is big and, and oversized. Massive center bin here. You know, you could get a Suzuki Swift in there, frankly. Yes, of course you can get a, a drink bottle in the door bins, but as well as a drink bottle, you can even get a bottle of champagne, because let's face it, it's an LTZ, so we're all about the champagne and the LTZ, aren't we? USB-C, USB-B, auxiliary ports there, more USB chargers here, 12 volt charger there, there's more in the back. Um, oh, this thing here, this is your trailer uh, braking adjustment, so you can adjust uh, the bias, <coughs> excuse me, the biasing on your trailer plus and minus on your trailer brakes there, really handy. Lane keep assist, parking assist, auto start stop, tailgate up and down, hazards, you know, traction control on and off, um, power, I guess that's for, I think that there is supposed to be a power point, in some markets that's a power point, but we don't seem to have it here. Anyway, uh, hill descent control, inductive phone charging, it's a mirror or is it a camera? Very nice camera actually. The LTZ in New Zealand and Australia has a sunroof, so you've got a tilt slide sunroof here, there we go, open the sunroof, and the other little feature that is accessed up here is the back window. You can slide that open as well, so you can hear the burble of your big V8. Actually, you can't hear it, even with that window open. It's still a very quiet car. So this is me at full height, standing at full height in front of the Chevy, yeah? No, it's not actually. This is full height in front of the Chevy, but as you can see, it's still a really, really tall, broad bonnet. So the problem I have is that if this was a lamppost here, say, how far out does the curb come? 
you just can't see. I mean, you can't see my feet, I'd imagine, until I'm about, sort of around about, around about here somewhere, probably. You know, maybe here you can see my feet, but that's a long way away from the truck. So, yeah, this, this front three-quarter visibility thing, I can see why big truck drivers, full-size rig drivers, have a problem uh, and can run over cyclists and pedestrians without really knowing they're even there because it's just so hard to see what's down uh, close to your vehicle uh, in this front three-quarter. But you have cameras all around the vehicle. There's 15 different camera views you can dial in. So I guess that would be the way of actually just reassuring yourself that you're not gonna run someone over. It's very tranquil in here. Because it's a petrol engine, it's very muted in its power delivery, it's very smooth, and it's just got that punch that those diesel utes that we're mainly used to just don't have. If you're not towing something and you're just running it around as a regular standalone vehicle, it's got some boogie. It absolutely has some boogie. Tooling down the motorway here, 100 kilometers an hour, flying with traffic. It's really quiet. And although it's just got leaf springs in the back and I'm not carrying anything in the tray, which would help settle it down, I found the ride pretty good. I mean, I'd describe it as pillowy. Um, I've gone over a few judder bars and, and traffic calming platforms and suburbs. And uh, yeah, you get that double whammy. So you are aware of its ladder chassis credentials, but it rides quietly and there's no clonking, there's no banging or crashing. As I say, it's a very soft floaty ride. It actually corners pretty well on the open road. It corners pretty flatly. It doesn't roll over like you might expect a two and a half ton vehicle. It seems to be about seven or eight meters up above the ground, wood corner. So quite happy to, um, to go out on the road knowing I'm not gonna get seasick. Generally, road manners are really good. It's stable. It's, as I say, quiet. It's got some, some punch, so. You know, no diesel ute will ever accelerate like that. And at 14.1 litres per 100 kilometres for the last 5,000 k's, according to the trip meter here, it's doing okay in terms of economy. Uh, the factory quotes 12.3 litres per 100 k, but I imagine this car's been doing a lot around town, a lot of start-stop driving and idling like I've been doing with it, setting up cameras and things. So uh, yeah, if it can do 12.3 litres per 100k for a 2.5 ton behemoth like this, it's doing pretty well. You don't want to take this anywhere too tight. In fact, I think it's a good idea to do a bit of a Google search on your destination before you set off to make sure you've got plenty of, of room to turn around and get through narrow gaps because um, she's not at home in tight spaces. I think the turning circle is 14.3 meters, which is considerable. So it might be easier rather than trying to do a, a U-turn somewhere to head back in the opposite direction is just to sell it and buy another one heading that way. One thing I like about this vehicle is that it has the option of having all your cross traffic alerts and proximity alerts for sensors on the vehicle uh, playback through the haptic seat. So I'm getting little trembles from my driver's seat now as vehicles cross behind me, uh, rather than a chime. I mean, I can set it to have a ch chime, but I'm finding actually these, um, the haptic seat is actually really good because it's not so intrusive, doesn't interrupt the radio or phone calls, but it still gives you a good, clear message that if you're not careful, you're gonna have a crash. And one of the pieces of technology on board the Silverado that I'm really enjoying is the way it displays some of the consumable items on the vehicle and uh, their service life. I can see, for instance, that the engine has done a total of 173.4 hours. My front brake pads have currently got 96% of their life available, and the rear brake pads have got 97% available. What else have we got here? Air filter life, 70% available of my air filter life. Oil life, only 23% left of my oil life, so I'm obviously coming out for an oil change. It makes running a vehicle like this really uh, easier to do if you're treating it as a real workhorse. Very helpful, thank you GM. I like that sort of information. One thing I really like about this vehicle, it's got a thing called teen mode. So if you've got kids, you can give them one of the remote controls and have programmed that to limit the amount of volume you can get out of the, uh, the in-car entertainment system. And also you can limit the top speed that it has as well. So uh, that's good. Not only that, but at the end of their little drive down the road to get the milk, 
the car can give you a report card as to how they drove. It'll use all its sensors and performance recorders to tell you later on just how quickly or how fiercely they drove this vehicle down the road to get the milk. Hmm, I like that. One of the worries I'd have if I owned the, uh, the Silverado is that I'd be tempted to take people on at the stoplights all the time. Because frankly, they probably don't expect a ute like this to accelerate like this. I had an example back there a while back. Some guy heavily tattooed on a Kawasaki Ninja motorbike. You know, he's, he's edging forward as he waited for the green light on our, on our phase to come up. You know, I knew he was keen, I knew he was keen. Um, yeah, and we were going two lanes into one, and light changed green, and I just tapped the old throttle. <laughs> this thing just exploded off the line, tires chirping at the rear, and um, I had to button off to let him go in front of me because I didn't want to sort of jeopardize him too much. But he got a hell of a fright. This thing goes pretty fast. So now I've had my few days with the, uh, the Silverado, what do I think is an outtake? Well, it's huge, like Texas huge. There's no escaping that. Everything is just oversized, particularly noticeable inside where you've got heaps of space for storage, for people, for everything you might want. I do feel kind of apologetic when I'm driving it, I've got to say. I, uh, I do feel that people might be hating on me and thinking, look at that prick sitting up there on that massive truck. Does he really need anything that big? Um, and yes, you are likely to incur a bit of that. Um, it's almost like I need to jump out every now and again and apologize saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, you know, I know it's a big use of resources and it takes a lot of fuel to keep it going, but I need to tow a big horse float or I need to tow a massive boat because if you've got that sort of task required of your, of your vehicle, there's not many things that could do what this thing can do. Yes, people will buy them for the fact that they are big and chrome and look at me, look at me, I'm a massive truck. But for those people who really can't get by with anything else, they're an ideal vehicle. But yeah, it's $130,990, let's not forget, so it's a good 40, 50, sometimes $60,000 more than other utes, but it is a lot bigger, a lot more capable in terms of towing, um, a lot more luxurious, it's got a huge amount of technology in there. So for the right buyer, this thing is going to be exactly what they want. And so it's proving because there's a back order list too. If you wanted to buy one of these and you ordered it now, you're gonna have to wait five, six months before it comes in. I found when I first hopped into it, wow, it is huge. It's quite a step up from what you normally drive, but you do get used to it. It can do a lot of things for you and it can be a lot of fun too.